video, I'm going to be showing you my pride nail for this year and it's got a lot of different elements to it that could be personalized and changed out to make it fit either people that are in your life that you care about or yourself. So down the middle of the nail there's the rainbow flag that is done in the 3D French style, kind of a melting 3D French. And I really enjoyed doing that because I haven't done too much 3D French stuff so that was a lot of fun just to play around with what you can really do with the technique. And then if you turn the nail to the side, you can see four hands that I sculpted that form a heart. And sculpting those hands was quite the process, but it was so rewarding because sculpting those hands, while it took me a lot of time, it was a challenge for sure, and I'm always up for a good challenge. And then I painted them with four different flags, and like I said, you could change any of the flags out so that they would match your personal situation. And then in the middle of the hands, there's a little spinner heart that says love is love. And I know that phrase is now controversial, but I still like it and I still feel like it embodies really how I believe with pride, that really anybody should be able to be who they are and love who they love. That's, I mean, it's simple. I don't, it shouldn't be complicated. It's simple. So happy pride to everybody. If you do belong to the LGBT, Q plus community. I hope you love this video as much as I do. And if you do decide to do a recreation, please share them with me. Spread the love. This month is all about love. So I love everybody. See you later. Bye. So we're going to begin by sculpting as thin a possible um, base with clear poly gel and if or you know acro gel whatever you want this one's actually the it's called um, ice blossom I believe from Adam Glam and I actually love the texture of that particular one when it comes to an acro gel type product and it is super clear the clarity is really the best I have personally ever used so I'm going to do that as thin base as possible down the length of the form however long you want the nail to be and then after that we're going to cleanse it and then we're just going to if you want to file it at all you can mine was very nice and smooth so I didn't feel the need but we're going to take a pencil and draw out the shape of that little cutaway place that we're going to do the 3d French that really helps out a lot and the pencil draws on top of that cleansed acro gel without any effort at all and it just gives you a really nice baseline to work off of so now we're going to start with the red section right near the cuticle area and then working it down down a little bit and at this point this is where some of your decisions are made uh, one what flag you want to do I decided to go with just the classic rainbow pride flag for this little cutout section and then also you have to decide if you want to do like a straight lines going down or more of a melted style and I went with the melted one so don't make your the little ends of each color straight lines give them kind of more of a randomized dripping sort of look or melted look like the melted crayon art has anybody seen those yeah anyways after that you're going to cap each section with some more of that clear acro gel again i'm using the ice blossom from madam glam and you're going to just do section by section working right down trying to create some nice height on each section so that they have plenty of space and room to file them later so we've got the red orange and then the next one's going to be yellow and when you're painting them you can kind of go over the previous section so like add yellow on top of the orange especially going up that side so that it really gets that 3d french type of effect so there's the yellow section any extra acro gel that you have you can kind of use your the little spatula tool that's on the end of the brush to cut away if there is any i know i did that with the orange one the next section is going to be green and all of these colors are from adam glam and i'll put their color names in the description box below if you are in the market for any of these classic rainbowy colors madam glam has such a beautiful selection of colors and I think most of these are their perfect collection perfect red orange yellow blue green I think the only one I didn't use that was from that collection was the purple I went with a different purple but otherwise I did go with just those perfect ones because they the coverage is just outstanding with them so we're going to do blue and fill in the tip with purple and then after you have all of those sections filled in and they're all capped like so then you're going to need to make sure you fully cure which you should have been curing all along after each step but just make sure that everything is fully 100% cured and then cleanse it and now taking an e-file or a hand file or in my case I actually did use both we're going to be cleaning up the edge and you want that edge on each side the vertical lines to be sharp and clean and crisp and to look at this nail just right side up it should look straight and then you should be able to invert it like I did and it should look straight that way too so just make sure that the lines look super straight no matter which way you view the nail and then after you're happy with that we're going to be painting the sides with a black gel polish and mine has this gorgeous little bit of glitter in it it's this glittery black it's king's choice from madam glam but we're going to be filling in and that's one of my personal favorites that king's choice color I've had it for so long and it's just it's always been a favorite of mine and no client of mine ever chooses it whenever they go black they just want smooth black 
stock. Nobody wants to have a little bit of glitter mixed in. I like the glitter personally. After that's done though, we are going to cap those sides with more of that acro gel. Surprise, surprise. And then after one side's done, kind of scrape off any extra, move it to the other side, add some more, make sure that all of this is filled in very well. In this particular type of design where it's got that 3D French style, it's more is more is less or more is more actually. I did that wrong. More is more. You want to have plenty of filing possibilities so that you don't have any drops in your design. You want it to be almost a little bit bulky so that you have plenty of space to remove extra product. And now we get to remove that extra product. Again, you can use a hand file or an e-file, or in my case, <laughs> I use both. I always use a hand file to clean up my work at the end. I don't ever usually show that particular step just because I think it's a little redundant after seeing that it's been filed with an e-file, but just so that you, you know, I usually do go through everything and clean it up with a hand file because you can't get quite as smooth a lines with an e-file. At least I can't. Um, so my personal preference is to do a hand file just to kind of go over it and make sure it's it's all smooth and even. And then after that nail has been perfectly filed to your liking, we're going to finish it with a layer of glossy gel top coat. And then if you don't want to do anything crazy and 4D, that's where you would end this. And that nail is gorgeous. The 3D French just down the middle would make a beautiful pride set. But if you do want to be crazy and over the top and extra, which I do, of course, we're going to be doing some more. So we're going to be making four hands out of some white 4D gel. So this 4D gel is almost like a pop polymer clay as far as texture goes with it. So we're going to sculpt two of the hands around a straw for the base part of it. So that's going to be the palm and the four fingers. Don't worry about the thumb yet. Just do the palm and the four fingers and use silicone tools to shape those fingers. And the great thing with sculpting a hand, <laughs> which is supposed to be one of the most hard things in the world to paint or draw, hands and horses, whatever I've always heard are the hardest things to do, is, well, the good thing about this is that you have a hand right next to you on you that you can use as a reference. And I definitely did use my own hand as a reference. You can make track or keep track of things like how long, if you start with your middle finger, then look to see if your pointer finger and your ring finger are the same length. Different people's are, different people's aren't. So there's different differences there. And then where does your pinky line up on your ring finger? Ask yourself these questions to try to get as many of the proportions on these hands accurate. And then look, is your palm the same length as your middle finger or is your palm the same length as your pointer finger or your ring finger? And just keep going through that process and comparing everything back to what you've already done. And hopefully as long as your measurements are accurate and they can just be eye measurements, you don't actually have to get out a ruler, but just eyeball it then hopefully you should have some luck getting everything to kind of even out. And once you're happy with the shapes of the backs of the fingers, cure that, and then you can pop it off the straw. And now we're going to be building up a little bit of bulk to the wrist. So I have that little bit shaped and rolled out, and then I'm going to blend it in. This 40 gel I'm using Wildflowers lace paste for it is actually, it blends out and you can add stuff to it. It is a very easy product to sculpt with. So we're going to be doing that and adding that little bit more to the wrist and just kind of playing with it until you're happy cure then we're going to be adding the thumb so place that and this is where looking at my own hand really helped because thumbs on this is the same thing different people's orientation of the thumb is different some the thumb is almost a, like a 90 degree angle to the other finger some people if they put their hand flat their thumb is almost upright it just kind of depends on the person and it's going to look right to you if it's like your own hand so mine is i would say average where my thumb sits at an angle outwards when my hand is flat so that you can kind of use that knowledge just to help you out. And then after you have your thumb done, cure it and then flip the hand over, add a little bit more bulk to the palm of the hand and to the underside of the fingers. As you can see, they're very, very thin at this stage. And you just wanna keep adding, adding details until you're happy with it all in all. So this is for the hand one. When you sculpt the next hand over the straw, you're going to do it the opposite way so that you have a right and a left hand. And then when you sculpt the ones that are flat for the for the bottom of the heart shape, you're going to do that on a nail form backing. So I'm only showing you sculpting the one hand because most of it is redundant. But when you're doing this and you're sculpting the ones flat on the nail form backing, when you put it in the in the lamp, bend your nail form backing very, very slightly so that your fingers aren't stick straight because that looks a little unnatural, but they have just a very, very, very soft curve. It shouldn't be visible almost. The curve should be almost where you don't even see that it's there, but just enough to make the hand look relaxed. So it looks like this is, it just gives it a happier vibe than having the hand super straight. You want this all to just be a relaxed, a relaxed thing. And these hands are making a heart and they're happy to be making the heart. If that makes sense, make the hands look happy. 
<laughs> we're emoting with little sculpted hands. So here's all of the hands and I'm going to be trying my best to set them upright even though they don't want to sit upright on a piece of paper so that I can kind of look at and get um, a template made for my heart that's going to go between them. You want to make sure that the heart isn't too big where it won't have room to spin. So err on the smaller side than the bigger side because it's better to be safe than sorry. And you can kind of hold your hands up best you can. They didn't want to sit up at all. So I just, once I thought it was good, I just went with it. Then you're going to use more of that 4D gel and you're going to be sculpting your heart over your template just so that you know that it is a good size. Use your silicone tools once again to clean up the edges if you need to, but then you're also going to create a groove down the very center of your heart. So create a nice deep groove and then take a little bar bead and you're going to be placing that into the middle of the heart so that you have a place where a wire can go through. So place your little Barbie, try to find a long one. In the set of Barbies I have, they're not all the same length. They're, you know, they vary a little bit. So find a longer one if that's the same case for you. Make sure that both ends are clear. After that's cured, pick it up off of the nail form backing and then fill in over that bead with more of the 4D gel and make sure that by the time you're done smoothing all of this out and blending it out, one, you don't really see that there's you know, that groove in there from before. It's going to show a little bit, but you don't want it to be overly obvious. So that's, you know, important thing number one. Important thing number two is try to make sure that those little openings are actually open. And one way to do that is before you cure it at this stage, take your piece of wire that you're planning on using or at least wire of the same gauge and push it through just to make sure that it does clear that bead and it won't have, it won't get stuck. After you're happy with it, cure it. And now we're going to be painting our heart with our rainbow colors. So this is the same rainbow as we did on the on the inside of the 3D French. I am one thing that is different though is for the 3D French, I was using gel polish to create my rainbow. And in this particular uh, rainbow, I'm doing acrylic paint instead. It's my preference to use acrylic paint. So I did switch it up for this since it would work. And so the colors may not match 100% perfectly. <laughs> As you can see, I'm making a mess too, but it matches very well. And it's long as it matches very well, I'm happy with it. So I started in the middle with yellow and then I'm going to be doing green and then blue going back and forth to make sure that my rainbow heart is continuous from one side of it to the other. As this will spin, we want it to not have a weird transition on the sides of the heart so it looks like it doesn't quite match up. You want it to just be a nice smooth, smooth thing. Let that paint dry and then you're gonna have to move your tweezers down a little bit to add the orange and the red stripes to the top of the heart. Flipping it over, doing the back too. You just want to make sure that everything with this heart is fully covered. You don't want any white space left visible. You want every single inch of it, including filling in that groove a little bit with your acrylic paint to be to be covered. Then I'm going to string my heart over my piece of wire. This is actually just going to make it easier to hold. I couldn't do that before because I wanted to paint inside the groove, but now that that's done, I can just put my put my wire there and that actually acts as a handle at this point. So now on one side of the heart, we're going to write love is and switch up your fonts. That's one of my favorite little tips when you're doing more than one word on a nail is not to use the same font or writing style. So do some cursive, do some fonts with serifs, do some without serifs, make some look like type, make some look like they're handwritten. It just gives it a little bit more interest. Obviously doing all of those different types of writing takes some practice and some skill, but it's just really fun. I actually love doing hand lettering. It's something that I just play around with and I love doing it as a hobby. So for me, doing different kinds of writing within a design like this is like a bonus activity. It's like extra credit and I love it. So if that is something that you're into too, I definitely recommend it because like I said, it just gives the design a little bit more interest. So we've got our love. I started out with white paint and then I'm filling in the lines with black, which is the opposite of what I typically do. I like to do black lettering with little white highlights, but I thought this just looked a little bit more clean and a little bit more sharp. So that's what we're doing for this. Once we have the love is written, spin that baby around and then we're going to do love again. This time for my O, I'm going to do a heart instead and do a much more relaxed kind of handwritten almost like a petition sign type of writing for that and then fill that in with the little black letters in the heart as well just to give it a little bit more a little bit easier to read is what the black lines do and then after that we can attach our piece of wire to the underside of the nail with some more of that acra gel hold that wire as straight up and down as you can pat in the a little bit of acro gel underneath so that it smooths over the end of the wire flash cure that before you put it in your lamp so that you don't have to worry about holding it upright in the lamp and then once that's cured fully then you can top coat the heart with gel top coat make sure you don't get any gel top coat on your wire as that could make it so that the heart won't spin and you want the heart to be able to spin 
fairly easily, actually. Then once you're done with that, we can paint our hands with different pride flags. The first one I'm doing is the pansexual flag, which goes pink fingertips, yellow middle, and blue wrist. And again, I'm using acrylic paint for this, not gel paint, not gel polish. And there is a very good reason to use acrylic paint over the others in this particular situation. If like me, you sculpted in all sorts of details to your hands, like wrinkles on the knuckles, fingernail detail, and you really took your time making sure that those hands had had some life to them. You don't want to use a gel product that will float in all of those little details that you sculpted to make them disappear. So the next one I did is the bi flag, which is pink fingertips, purple middle, and then a darker blue wrist. And with these flags, I know I mentioned this in the intro, but I want to say it again, do flags that are meaningful to you, whether they're what represents you in your in your situation, whether they represent somebody that you are very close to, somebody that you love, just try to make them a little bit more personalized. So I think that just makes this design so beautiful is that you can really make it so that it is your own. And if, for instance, you want to do two, ow, I just hit my hand on my microphone. Um, if you, I'm talking with my hands which I always do. But if you want to make the flags, if you have two flags that really represent what you want to say, then do opposite hands. Do the hand in the upper corner and the lower, like the upper curved part on the right and the lower straight part on the left. Do those one flag and then the opposite, a different flag. And you don't have to do as many as I did. I was just trying to encompass this as much as possible. Uh, you could simplify it and you don't have to do as many. So just pick whatever you feel is appropriate for you and then go from there. So the next one I did, this is the asexual flag, which goes purple wrist, white heel of the hand, uh, gray knuckles and black fingertips. Just because this one has the four colors, it gets spaced a little bit differently. And now the last one is going to be the transgender flag, it goes blue, pink, white, pink, blue. And the blues and the pinks are pastel instead of vibrant. So we're going to be doing that last one. And when you're doing all of these flags or, you know, you're painting all of these hands, try to make sure that you kind of give yourself some time to let each of them dry. So say do the fingertips across all of them. And then after that's dried, switch it around so that you can hold the fingertips while you're painting the rest of the hand or so on and so forth. So you'll notice that there's a spot where all of a sudden where I'm holding changes right there, that's because I've let them dry. And that takes anywhere from two, to 10 minutes usually I would say so by the time you get you know all of the fingertips done you should be able to go back through to the beginning and start over and finish off the hands without any just waiting time so now using either a nail glue product or a builder gel we're going to begin attaching the hands to the wire and you want to try to orient them like I said before so that all the thumbs are facing forward so that's something you have to kind of have in the back of your mind as you're sculpting the hands and now as you're assembling them so we're going to keep them keep them going flash cure every step of the way make sure that they are very secure you don't want them to fall off the wire so I'm using builder gel to do all this and as I am going I am adding more gel to make sure that they are nice and secure and they're not just attached with a tiny tiny bit i'm going to add some more right there flash cure that make sure that both places where the hand touches the other hand and where the hand touches the wire are nicely attached same thing as i've said before make sure that that heart doesn't become stationary so you don't want to get any gel on the heart that's in the middle once all of those are done, make sure that the heart spins and then go through and add a little bit more gel here and there, wherever it seems like there needs to be just a little bit more security. So basically any place where the hands touch each other, just add a little bit more, a little more reinforcement. And you can move the heart out of the way like you saw by turning it so that it's not going to hinder it and then cure that fully. And now we're going to come back and I'm going to add some very minor black outlines just to do the bigger shapes on the hands. Initially, I wasn't planning on doing any outlining on the hands. I wanted them to just be the striped flags. But then as I was looking at them, I just thought to myself, you know, these really need some more definition. I have all this beautiful sculpting done, but you can't see it. And so I'm going to go through and just kind of bring all of that to the surface and make it a little bit more visible. And doing that with black acrylic paint in this particular circumstance is my recommendation over a different type of outlining product like gel paint or gel polish. You know, there's a heaven place for everything. This particular design really just begs for acrylic paint. After all that, we're going to be top coating those hands with a very thin layer of matte top coat, not gel top coat, but just traditional lacquer. So that same thing, you don't fill in or flood any of your 3D details because the matte 
regular lacquer top coat will dry and fit into the grooves without flooding them. And after all of those have been fully top coated and protected so that that acrylic paint won't just wear right off, that is it. This design is done. I am so obsessed with it. I love it so, so, so much. If you do decide to do a recreation, I would be so honored to get to see it. And if you could share that with me on Facebook or Instagram, you guys have no idea how much that brightens my day. And we need to get more of these beautiful rainbowy, etc. manicures out in this month, if you ask me. So I hope you guys love this one. And I can't wait to see all of your recreations. Bye.